Welcome back to the Graham Stephan Show. So I've been really enjoying the Logan Paul and Paulson podcast lately because they've had a wide variety of guests who are all talking about money. In the past, we had Sophia Franklin, who was asking guys how much money they had in their bank accounts. And today we have Casey Neistat, the original, the OG YouTube vlogger, who is talking about how much money he made across his career and how much money he made by selling his company. And with that, I want to comment on it. As soon as you hit the like button and subscribe, that would mean the world to me. That's all I ask for. So thank you guys so much. And now let's get to the video. I do a lot of angel investing. Okay. Um, especially since selling my tech company. And it comes from a place of like, when I was raising capital for my company, it was like one of two people. It was like, people are like, this guy's got a really good idea. I want to invest in him, which was like no one. <laughs> Or it was everyone which was like, I believe in you. That's a big thing with angel investing, by the way. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with the concept of uh, angel investing, it's essentially buying into companies that are pre-IPO. So they're, they're not like, you know, buying a company on a stock market or anything like that. You're basically just giving the founder money in exchange for ownership of their company. Sometimes you're looking for investors who could give them guidance on how to run a company. Other times you're looking for investors that they could straight up just put on a pitch deck as basically an advertisement to say, these people invested in us. And then other times you really just give them money because they truly want to use that money and they're not making enough in the early stages and people really just believe in them long term. Now, in Casey's scenario, though, when it comes to angel investing, that is basically money that, in, in most cases, you're just lighting on fire. It, it, it's money that is completely illiquid. It's really hard to cash out of. And it's either you're going to IPO and make a lot of money or you're going to make nothing. So to angel invest like this is basically you have the disposable income you want to throw at companies and see if they you know flop or if they become a big winner. Have any of them taken off angel investing is tricky yeah i mean i've had i've had a, a couple of i've had two wins that have put me in the black for every check i've ever written whoa that's crazy see that that's angel investing for you is that you really have to spread your investment across a wide variety of companies otherwise if you just do like one here and one there chances are you're going to lose. So it's going to take about 25 companies on average to be able to hit one that will hopefully do enough. Hopefully. And even then, you know, in my opinion, it's it's when you have more time and money on your hands, you can start doing these things. And usually you're a strategic partner. So you're not only just investing your money because money can be easy to come by. It's you're investing your resources, your connections, your advice. That's really why a lot of these companies want to raise money at different stages. I never had money until I, like real money until I sold my company, which was 2017, I think. How much you make off of that? The equity sale was 25 million. So what was announced to the public was that it was 25 million. That's what they paid for the company itself. But then we had like a fat comp package and like all this other shit. So it was like the total sale was like right around 36 million. 36 million dollars. So basically when you really break it down, they're valuing his time as being worth 11 million dollars. Because keep in mind, he's selling the company itself for 25. But the total package is 36. So because he's he's probably paid to stay on board and work with it and continue growing the company probably for two years, my guess is that he's probably valuing himself at about five and a half million dollars a year to stay on and run the company. Now, in hindsight, we could look back and say, you know what, it didn't quite pan out. But for some of these companies, take a risk on someone like Casey Neistat, it's a drop in the bucket. For them to spend $36 million, I mean, that could be a rounding error for some of these big conglomerates. I mean, for them, that it's nothing. And just like they're doing that with Casey Neistat, they're probably doing that with 10 other creators at the same time or 10 other companies that you just don't hear about until one eventually hits. It's like their version of angel investing is what Casey is now doing with other companies. Which was great, which was great. Um, like a really happy outcome. Like the greatest day oh, in any- of it? A lot. I did really well. Oh, I did really cool. well. Oh, um, cool. Yeah. Uh, I spent most of that money on Prime, though, which, like, you know, <laughs> so it was three bucks a bottle, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wish you went into more detail, though, about what he really did with the money. My guess is that, uh, you know, New York City, very expensive. So let's just assume that of the $36 million that he received, half of that has gone to tax. So right off the bat, he's left with $18 million. Um, my bet is he's probably invested... I'm going to say, and I'm making up numbers here, okay? I'm, I'm totally making up numbers. He probably invested another 
$3 million. I'm going to say, I'm just going to throw a number out there, $3 million in other startup investments. So he's going to take a portion of that $3 million, bucks, spread that across maybe 30 other companies to see, hey, maybe one of them is going to hit $100,000 each. That's pretty good. He's getting a lot of diversification here. That leaves him with $15 million left over. Now, if he invested that in a diversified portfolio, uh, and he's pulling out, let's say, 3.5% a year. He's basically making $525,000 a year in perpetuity from his investments, which I think is actually very realistic because you have to keep in mind, that's not his only income source. He's got his YouTube channel. He's got other endeavors. He's probably pulling in, my guess, at this point in his career, three, $4 million a year. It's probably my guess given that he's not posting as much on his channel, but he's doing TikTok. He's probably got his hands in a lot of things. So that's my guess as of right now. And if he decided to start posting like three times a week consistently, ugh, he could probably ramp that up to $15 million a year. Deciding it'd be a good idea to have a kid at age 16, moving to New York City at age 19 with a 10th grade education and $800, and then deciding to start a technology company. Um, having never written a line of code in my life. Those are the three times when I look back at my life and it's like, I can't empathize with where my head was when I made those <laughs> You know what? A quote from Warren Buffett on this sort of topic really comes to mind here. I'm going to butcher it, but he said something along the lines of, you're going to get a few opportunities throughout your life to really hit it big. And it's up to you to really take advantage of those opportunities. For Casey, moving to New York, starting a YouTube channel, starting a tech company. For me, it was getting into real estate in 2008, uh, you know, starting the YouTube channel, investing everything I had at the time into real estate in 2011. I mean, there have been a few pivotal moments in my life so far financially that have really helped me out. And in your life, you're probably going to have a few opportunities to that you could go left or right. And if you make the right decision, it's gonna pan out really well for you. And in Casey's case, it really panned out well. My professor at MIT was the first investor in my tech company. And he was like, okay, I wanna be your first investor. You can put me down for $100,000. No conditions. And like the minute that human being who believed in me said that, I was like, I will die but I will not fail. You know what though? It's gotta be really motivating uh, not to let other people down like that. Like when they hand you a check for $100,000 and say, hey, this is how much I believe in you. Go and start this company, make some money, turn it into a real business. You're not gonna let them down. I mean, listen, you, you might let them down, but uh, you're not gonna let them down willingly. I mean, to take someone's money like that and then go about and run a business afterwards. Like it's gotta be so motivating just not to let that person down. I would, like for me, just the idea of having someone else's money in my hands makes me so uncomfortable. But I mean, if I ever got to the point where I'd be starting my own company like that and taking on investors, I would like, I would never wanna let them down. So that would really drive me hugely uh, to not screw that up. But by the way, guys, how about this? It would help me out a lot. If you believe in me, I got a newsletter down below in the description. If you want to check it out, I basically take all my videos and I do like a really big deep dive in, in more detail than I'm able to provide in a YouTube video on some of the topics that I talk about. So if you guys want to be a part of it, the link to that is down below. It's free. It's totally free. And it takes you like 20 seconds to sign up. And I'm not, I'm not like spamming your inbox or anything like that. They go out like once a week. Uh, we end up having like 60% of people reading each newsletter every single week, which is pretty high. So if you want to be a part of it, the link is down below. It's free. I'm not going to spam you, okay? And you could always unsubscribe if you're, if you're not happy with it. But uh, let me know what you think. Been spending some time in the newsletter lately, and uh, it's been going really well. So let me know what you guys think. I'd love to get to a place, although I don't have anything that I have the passion about that you have for Prime. And I say that, and like the passion that Jimmy has for Feastables. Like I had it for my tech company, where it's like, no, what matters to me now is promoting this thing that's mine. Mm -hmm. I don't really have that right now. And that kind of feels good. Yeah, the one thing I noticed though with, with Logan Paul and Mr. Beast, I mean, they're all in on one single idea. They're not like dabbling here and there. And Mr. Beast is, uh, in a sense, but he's kind of pulled back from Mr. Beast Burger. He's going through some stuff on that. Uh, Logan Paul, the same thing with Prime. Like he's all in on Prime and everything else he's doing is really just an advertisement for Prime. I think it's really smart. I think that's probably the way to achieve longevity in any sort of YouTube career. And I recognize even for myself, like by not having a product like that, besides the newsletter, you know, you kind of limit yourself in terms of what you could do. The genius behind what Logan Paul and what Mr. Beast is doing is that that could run independently of Logan Paul or Mr. Beast. 
which, you know, on YouTube, it's like your face is the brand. Your face is the business. And if you take your face away, the business goes away. So I think it's really smart to diversify in ways like this. Casey hasn't done that to that extent because he is the brand. But if he did, he would just have to give it the same attention that he gave his channel. And I know it'll do well. I think if I could do anything I wanted, all I would do is hang around in my studio and like build new shelves, like screw shelves into the wall. Yeah. Nothing makes me happier than that. What's like a category that you would put all that Carpentry, stuff? Carpentry, manual labor. Oh, got it. <laughs> you know what? It's weird, but I kind of get the same enjoyment of, of building something or constructing something with your hands. There's something you get out of it where you're working with your hands and you see the finished task and you know what you have to do. It's all you focus on. I did that recently with the garage. I painted my entire garage. It took 12 hours but I painted the whole thing black myself and it was really enjoyable. Like it was one of the few things and I, it's been a long time since I woke up in the morning and was just like, I'm excited. Like I couldn't wait to wake up to paint the garage. I know it sounds weird, but it became this task where I just loved it. And I wanted to just keep going late to finish the garage. I got so much satisfaction from that. I used to be able to get that from making YouTube videos and that's dwindled. Sometimes I get it. So like now is one of the few times where I'm like, yeah, I get to film this video. I really enjoy it. But to have that feeling over like painting a garage and now I'm doing the floors. <laughs> so I'm, I build out this whole garage and making it really nice and maybe I could film in there. But, uh, you know, I, I've not put that much attention into a project in a very long time. So I get what Casey's saying. So with that said, you guys, let me know what you guys think of Casey's finances down below in the comment section. I'll do my best to read as many comments as I can. Also, feel free to add me on Snapchat and Instagram. And don't forget that you could get some free stocks worth all the way up to a few thousand dollars when you make a deposit using a paid affiliate link down below in the description. Like I said, it could be worth a few thousand dollars when you make any deposit. Enjoy. Let me know which stocks you get. Thank you so much. And until next time.